Hi everyone, my name is Josie Gleason and I'm from the University of Melbourne and my talk today is on using nanopore direct RNA sequencing to detect differential expression between human cell populations and this research is also currently available on BioArchive as a preprint if anyone wants some further information. So considering over 95% of human genes undergo alternative splicing and changes in splicing lead to disease or reveal important information about development, it's important that we're able to study all the unique isoforms that arise from single genes. So short read sequencing such as Illumina is limited in its ability to resolve these spliced isoforms due to the requirement of uh, fragmenting RNA prior to sequencing. So these short reads shown here in blue can be thought of like pieces of a puzzle and using new long read sequencing technology, uh, no fragmentation steps are required and the reads should span entire isoforms making the puzzle or isoform become clear. So what we know so far, uh, direct RNA produces long read lengths, some of which represent full length transcripts as they're present in the cell. And this technique allows for the discovery of many novel isoforms and characterizes uh, poly A tail lengths and RNA modifications, all from the one sequencing experiment. So identifying differential expression of genes and transcripts between conditions is an important requirement in RNA sequencing generally. So in order for di uh, direct RNA sequencing to become a popular mainstream technique for transcriptomics, uh, we need to be able to use it to detect differential expression. And so far, uh, this has been shown in simple model organisms such as yeast using direct RNA. Um, so our aim was to test this technique's applicability to identify differential expression between human cell populations and also synthetic controls. So here's just um, an overview of the experiment we performed. So undifferentiated uh, SHSY5Y cells were cultured and then differentiated into neuron-like cells. RNA was then extracted from the two distinct cell groups and synthetic RNA controls called sequins were added to all the samples. These were all then sequenced on the nanopore minion device. So the synthetic RNA controls known as the sequins come in two different mixes, mix A and mix B. And each mix contains the same transcripts, but they're present in different concentrations between the two mixes. And this simulates changes in uh, expression. And this allows us to test our quantification accuracy and also our ability to detect differential expression. So on the left here, firstly, is a histogram of just the read lengths from uh, the sequent and human RNA generated from direct RNA sequencing with a median here of approximately one KB. On the right is a segmented linear regression, which compares the known and observed sequent gene counts. So using the sequent controls, we were able to compare our observed counts with the known counts and found that direct RNA quantified sequence accurately with a Spearman's row of 0.96 shown here at the gene level and 0.91 uh, as well at the transcript level. So this suggested we would hopefully be able to find differential expression of genes and transcripts between our cell populations. So uh, we also checked what percentage of our reads covered the entire length of their annotated transcripts. Uh, so we defined this known as coverage fraction as the reads alignment length divided by the known transcript length to which that read aligned. So we chose a minimum coverage fraction of 0.95 in order for a read to be classed as full length. And we found that 29% of our reads met this threshold and the median coverage fraction was 0.74. So shown on the right here is a density plot of the coverage fractions and their annotated uh, transcript lengths along the bottom. So the highest density is uh, at the top there in yellow, where transcripts of approximately one KB long have coverage fractions close to one. And the trend line on this plot uh, shows that the annotated, as the annotated transcript length increases, the coverage fractions tend to decrease, meaning reads originating from very long transcripts are less likely to be full length. So we did a principal component analysis to look at the variance between our samples. 
and we found that all samples cluster by their group in PC1 at the gene and transcript level for both human and sequin counts. So as shown in each of the four plots here, um, a very high percentage of the variance overall is explained by the difference in uh, undifferentiation and differentiation and between mix A and mix B for the sequins. So as mentioned, the sequin control mixes uh, contain the same transcripts, but they're present in different concentrations between mix A and mix B. So the concentrations are provided along with the sequins so that a known fold change between mix A and B for each gene and transcript could be calculated. So on the left is a regression of the known fold changes between the sequin mixes against the observed fold changes from our direct RNA sequencing data. So the fold changes are highly correlated with a slope close to one, showing that direct RNA accurately quantifies differences in expression. And although the fold changes measured are, um, are measured accurately, not many of the sequin genes or transcripts were identified as significantly differentially expressed with um, an adjusted p-value less than 0.05. This is likely due to the uh, low number of reads, meaning it's more difficult to reach that significance threshold. So from the two human cell populations, we found 231 genes and 291 transcripts uh, were differentially expressed between our two groups. Um, a gene ontology analysis of genes which were upregulated in our differentiated neuron-like cells uh, found that neurogenesis was actually the most associated term. And so this showed us that the technique uh, finds biologically relevant changes in expression as these differentiated cells were showing neuronal processes. So next, we decided to perform a differential isoform usage analysis to complement the differential expression analyses. So differential isoform usage occurs when the proportion of the total gene expression from each of the genes isoforms is different between conditions. So although overall gene expression may remain constant, the fractions of the isoforms expressed may change between two conditions. And the reason for assessing isoform fractions as well as uh, differential gene and transcript expression is because often differential transcript expression simply recapitulates the results shown at the gene level. And looking at the proportions of isoforms expressed gives us a more complete picture at the isoform level. So specific examples of differential isoform usage have been identified in a number of diseases, including cancers and neurological disorders. So we found uh, evidence of differential isoform usage in a potassium channel gene that's expressed in the brain, which has been implicated in neurological function and disease. So I'll walk us through this figure to break down which each, uh, what each of the plots is showing. So on the top here are the two isoforms from the KCNQ2 gene. And then along the bottom here are three bar charts showing uh, the expression levels. So the first two are gene and isoform expression levels respectively. And lastly, uh, the third is the, the fractions of either isoform present in the two conditions. So the bottom left of this figure shows us that the uh, gene expression between undifferentiated and the differentiated groups, uh, and that the, the expression between those two groups is, is similar across both of those groups. So when we look at the actual proportions here of the different isoforms used, um, we find that the shorter isoform, so the one at the top of this diagram, is upregulated in differentiated in undifferentiated cells. And the longer isoform on the bottom here with the extra domains is upregulated in the differentiated neuron-like cells. So this made sense to us biologically as the shorter isoform is missing the channel domains shown in the green and pink. As, uh, and as cells are differentiated and beginning to show neuronal processes, the longer isoform with more domains included is upregulated. And upon further investigation in the literature, uh, previous studies have supported this, showing that the shorter isoform is generally upregulated in undifferentiated neuroblastoma cells and fetal brain. And the longer isoform is upregulated in differentiated neuroblastoma cells and adult brain. So overall, we identified uh, 27 genes which showed differential isoform usage between our two uh, human cell populations. We uh, next used the program FLARE to identify novel transcripts in our direct RNA data. And we actually found that 40% of all unique transcripts that we identified were classed as novel. 
And although this number seems uh, really high, some other studies have reported uh, even higher numbers of novel transcripts, generally at around 50 to 60%. So we were able to use our uh, sequin controls, which are all of a known sequence to estimate a false positive percentage of novel transcripts. And we found that around 10% of our sequin controls were classed as novel. So our true number of novel transcripts more, uh, may more realistically be around 30%. So shown here is just one example of uh, novel transcripts from the DEF1 gene, which is implicated in neurodevelopmental disorders. So the novel features are highlighted in the colored boxes and show inclusion of exons in the longer transcripts, exon skipping and uh, novel exons as well. So direct RNA sequencing does still have some remaining limitations, uh, mainly ambiguous transcript assignment. So this is where a read has multiple alignments to different transcripts, making it difficult to determine which is the true alignment. Uh, this is mainly due to the current error rate of direct RNA sequencing, which is at around 10%, but does continue to improve as base calling software improves. And also, this is likely due to the modest amount of reads that represent full length transcripts, which uh, most likely results from fragmentation of RNA prior to sequencing. The throughput of direct RNA sequencing is also relatively low, which results in individual transcripts having low coverage and decreases the confidence uh, in calling novel transcripts. So overall, in conclusion from our study, we found that direct RNA sequencing produces high quality long reads, many of which are full length. It accurately quantifies both gene and transcript expression levels. It detects biologically relevant changes in expression between cell types and discovers many novel isoforms as well. So I'd just like to thank uh, my lab, the Clark Lab at the University of Melbourne and the manuscript authors who have all contributed to this research as well. Uh, in particular, my supervisor, Dr. Mike Clark. And uh, thank you all for coming. Please leave me any questions in the chat and I will get back to you uh, as soon as possible. Thanks.